Hello and welcome to a lesson on security awareness training and education. Let me get my pointer going here and we will jump right in. So the purpose of the module on security awareness and training is basically to reduce the insider threat. You want to reduce the risk of your employees who are on the inside. You don't want them to damage the company or to harm the assets or steal the data or anything like that. So you want to reduce the risk and that's the purpose of this. You also want to identify any security issues or security incidents or you want to train your employees to or you want to educate them and make them aware of any security issues or potential security threats or vulnerabilities within the organization. And you also want to educate them on attack methods that you're currently facing in your organization or whether it, whether the attack methods are social engineering or, or hacking methods or uh, anyway, so that's kind of the spirit of that. So education, what is education? Education is usually formal and it has some kind of a certification or degree or a credential of some type and it usually requires you to spend large amounts of money on the education. So for example, if you've taken the CISSP training course, it usually costs several thousand dollars. The education is accredited, so that means that it has to follow some kind of a standard. And then you have a, the education can be a prerequisite to jobs. So for example, you see a lot of job listings out there that say qualifications include CISSP or CISM or a bachelor's in IT security or IS, um, management information systems and so on and so forth. So training, what's the difference between training and education? Well, training is semi-formal and this is usually provided by your employer during your employment. Uh, in meetings or or whatnot, and then you this this is automatically tracked usually, and it's required by some kind of law or regulation. Awareness awareness is basically the employees being aware, making the employees be aware of the requirements for security. And so the this is less formal, obviously. It's unscheduled, and it's really not mandatory. It's but it's good to do. So this could be things like emails, reminders, or me discussions in meetings, which you should do. You should discuss security frequently in meetings, or posters that are posted around the office reminding people of security issues and how to prevent them. So we have methods of learning now. So the, the, the main, well, yeah, I, I guess this is the main thing that a lot of people do is the computer-based training, and that's where your employee, the individual, will sit down and log into their computer and click on a link and go to this training. And the training takes them through several modules and has automated quizzes and things like that. So the benefits of it, of course, are going to be that it's standardized. Everybody's going to have the same module, the same method of learning. The standardization is going to make it more effective. And you're going to have things like automated quizzes in there that can instantly test their knowledge of the material. And of course, it's going to be automatically tracked through the application, whatever it is that's, that's hosting the, the training itself. So those are some typical benefits. The downside, however, of, of computer-based training would be that people not, they don't pay attention and they just kind of do what's called click-through. They just kind of click through each screen if they can. Another method of learning is the live instruction here. And one of the benefits, of course, of live instruction is that they can't click through the material and there's live Q&A that can happen. Of course, the instructor is going to build rapport with the audience, with the students. So that some of the downsides it does require a special skill set. So for example, what I'm doing and what, what the computer-based trainers do is they record and then they can go back and edit or re-record if it didn't quite turn out right. They present in a live environment, which can be challenging. And so the skill set they have to have is they have to be a subject matter expert and they have to be an educator. They have to know educational methods. Another method of learning is rewards some kind of reward system. So you could have things like recognition, a meeting where you recognize somebody or uh, an email recognition, or you could have a monetary reward to help people learn security. <clears throat> things like uh, somebody who, anybody who identifies an incident and it prevents the company from being embarrassed or, or losing money or whatever, then there could be some kind of a, fin a financial reward or incentive there. You could also give the employees time off for a job well done, uh, informal time off, or let them go early a couple hours or something like that. Other methods would be uh, sending email reminders. You could have a newsletter in your organization, or you could 
have announcements on your home page. You could, as we discussed before, or as we mentioned before, discuss it in meetings, team meetings or group meetings or division meetings or branch meetings, whatever you want to call it. And you could have posters around the office. So content review. What is content review? This is sort of informal, and this is where you're going to review the training module. You're going to make sure that it has the current laws that are applicable to your security program, your data. You're going to make sure that the content discusses relevant breaches or breach methods, how to prevent breaches and how to identify them. You're going to review it for whether or not it's training people on the security tools that are in place with your organization. You don't want to be referencing applications and tools that are outdated. And you want to review the policies, of course. You want to make sure that the policies are up to date and they have the, like, the right references and the correct links in them. And you want to make sure that you're educating people on the current attack methods that you are facing in your industry. So now we move on to content evaluation, which is different than content review. So what is evaluation? Well, it's a little bit more formal. And this is where you're going to test the participants in one way or another. I mean, there's various different ways you can do this. You can do live quizzes and tests in the material itself. You can do these, these tests can also be uh, um, phishing emails and things like that, fake phishing emails. You can do audits. You can audit the organization. You can do spot checks, desk checks, make sure people are keeping their desks clean and that data isn't left out where people can see it. Penetration tests, again, it's kind of in line with quizzes, tests, and audits up there. Uh, penetration tests, again, are the overall assessment of your security organization, your organization's security posture. And mock social engineering, this is where you might have somebody who's doing these evaluations call in and try to social engineer some of your people. And you can also test responses to formatted attacks. And so this is these are all part of the penetration testing methods. Continuing on with this line of thought, we have uh, user log reviews. So what your users are doing both on the internet and internally on your applications, you want to make sure that those fall in line with the training that you provided. So are they only accessing information that they have a business need to do so? All right, so a good quiz question, and I just made this up, is what is the difference between training awareness review and training awareness evaluation? So you want to be thinking about questions like this as you go through the book or you go through your, your material, whatever it is, or you, these, even these online courses. You want to be thinking about questions. You want to be comparing terms. And if anything seems like it's in a gray area, you're going to want to focus on that and try to really review because words are very important in this exam. And so the difference between review and evaluation, there you might think to yourself, there is no difference. I mean, in principle, maybe not, but there really is a difference in the approach that you would take to a review and the approach you would take for a formal evaluation. And that's one of the keys here is that you have formal informal for the review and formal versus evaluation. So here are the options. Review is formal. Evaluation is informal. Review examines content. Evaluation examines context. Then we have review looks at inputs and evaluation looks at outputs. And then we have review examines outputs and evaluation looks at inputs. Okay, so this is a challenging one because you may know the answer, but but the thing about questions like this, that they can try to trick you. And this is not from the exam, by the way. We don't do, we have not put anything that was on the exam. All of our questions are original. We just do them in the style that we think is more updated compared to most of the exam engines out there. They mean the exam websites that are out there. So these responses seem kind of vague. For example, you have uh, review is informal, evaluation is informal. Well, we know that review is informal and it's the opposite of that. So we can rule that one out. B is review examines content. That's true. And evaluation examines context. That's, I don't, it does maybe, but that's not a really great answer. So we're going to put that one on the table for now. Review looks at inputs. That is true. Okay, so this is worded really strangely, but I think that's a true statement. So review looks at inputs. Yes, because you're looking at the laws, the content, the breaches, the, the tools, and all that stuff. And then it says evaluation looks at outputs. And when you think about it, it this could be the right answer because evaluation looks at outputs. We're, well, what are the outputs? It's kind of a general term, but yes, employee behavior is kind of what we're 
hoping for. And it looks at outputs like a report that says, here's where you need to improve, things like that. Um, and it looks, at, it looks at the product of the training, basically, the education and the training program. And then we have this option, review examines outputs, evaluation looks at inputs. Well, the review doesn't really look at outputs, does it? Does it, well, out, what are outputs from the training program? You have the people, right? And then evaluation looks at inputs. That's kind of a weird, a weird answer. But so you just have to go with the lesser of all the evils when you're, when you're doing questions like these. And so I would pick C and according to, yes, according to my notes, this is actually the correct answer it would be C. And you know, if you evaluate these a lot, you're going to notice that, that there are, none of these questions are worded great and you might even find errors in them. But really the key to, to CISS prep being a, a good, uh, a good tool for you to use is just practicing answering those kinds of questions. Because if you can, Get a lot of practice answering those types of questions. You'll be really prepared for the exam. So as always, thanks again for watching. And if you want to practice taking some really, really difficult questions that are in line with the style of the CISSP exam, head on over to cisssprep.net and sign up. It's $15 for six months, which is a steal. There's over a thousand questions. So hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.